Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. You are in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza, and I'm really excited about speaking with our guest today. He has he is the uh, producer, executive vice president of of Happy Society, Happy Science Productions, and he has the movie The Real Exorcist that is coming out in August 21st. It's a spiritual movie. Um, I actually had an advanced copy of it and really enjoyed it, so can't wait for it to get some national acclaim. It has actually been ranked number one for five consecutive weeks in Japan, and our guest decided not to be stingy and just give it to the Japanese audience, so we're actually going to have some filmings here <laughs> in Atlanta. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Yoshi Yutabi to the podcast. Welcome, Yoshi. Okay, thanks so much for having me on the show today. Thank you. Or, sh- or should I say konnichiwa? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, thanks for making the podcast. Uh, and I am really excited about seeing the movie. Uh, I won't give away too many of the, of the storyline because I think mm-hmm. everyone should see it on the first part. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, the first question I did want to ask you is it's called The Real Exorcist. Mm-hmm. And for people that are going to listen to this and do their Google searches or whatever, or yep. search, uh, they're going to find a TV series in 2008 called The Real Exorcist. So mm-hmm. I wanted to know how you got around uh, competing TV series. And then, of course, here in the States, we had The Exorcist in the 70s. So right. what was the right, – right. What? how did you come to yeah. – uh, or how were you able to get around mm-hmm. – well, any actually, challenges in getting the movie out? Yeah, for the the real Exorcist, the TV series, I I I actually didn't know about it. I know about the movie called the the Exorcist. So uh, yeah, uh, if you compare the movies for like the Exorcist and like horror movie, uh, this movie is actually rated PG thirteen. So it's not a PG, but it's thirteen. And it's not really R. So. It's not really a horror movie, so when people hear the word exorcist, even, you know, automatically they're going to think, oh, it must be a horror, a very scary. It has, a, I think you, you see the movie, it has a, thank you for watching the movie, by the way, I appreciate it very much. Um, I think there's a little bit of a, of a horror touch, I guess, but very small. Amount. It's more of like a Japanese supernatural fantasy thriller, that's what I, I call it. And the biggest difference between the regular horror movie and this movie is that it's not just it's not that as scary as horror, but you know the, the main main uh, mission of horror movies is to scare people, right? So when they go see the movie because they want to get scared, and that's the excitement. It's like getting on a roller coaster. It's excitement throughout the, the one and a half hours, and at the end of the day, you don't really get something out of the movie, but you just get like a refreshing moment or um, <laughs> the, some kind of, a, um, you know, the, that, the moment that you enjoy, it's like entertainment. But this movie is called The Real Exorcist because uh, it is actually based on the true events or true facts, factual base, as, as you call. Um, the executive producer's uh, Ryuho Oka's real experience and real fact is based on the story that he wrote. So... I think you see the movie. It's not just about you know uh, the ghost, you know, uh, ex- exercising the ghost, but there is more depth to it. There's like a, there's something you can learn. There's something you can take away that would be helpful for your life. And it's actually the movie of you know uh, the hope. You 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 see the hope and the warmth and the light from this movie. So it's really opposite of what the the horror movies are. So. That's how oh, we absolutely. This movie. Yeah. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. and we can dive in, into the movie, but I do want to back up for a second because mm-hmm. just looking over your bio, it seems like you would be a perfect person to be a part of this project. Uh, you were born in, in, in Japan, you, mm-hmm. but you grew up in Lebanon and New York yep. City. And, and it's, it's rare in Japanese culture to have Japanese and Christian um, mm-hmm. Influence, and you were also influenced by the Muslim culture while living in Lebanon. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're covering so many bases uh-huh. uh, that I think that you're probably more open 
to the subject yeah. matter. And mm-hmm. it, was that the case to even be a part of, of this movie? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, uh, yeah, like uh, you explained to me, I was, uh, I'm pre- I was pre-exposed to so many different cultures. Uh, just living in New York City, uh, in New York, you, it is, just being there is a melting pot of the world. So you get to meet all the same kinds of people and all different, um, you know, religious and uh, cultural background. And even after that, I traveled maybe over 30 countries, you know, because I was in IT company for a long time, and I travel around the world basically everywhere. So uh, I've seen many, many different things. And since I was a child, I was uh, raised as a very uh, dedicated Christian and Protestant Christian family, which is very, very rare for a Japanese family. But uh, so I always had this, this faith thing in myself, and I always wondered, like, what, you know, why are we here? And, where are we going? Where do we come from? All these the crazy questions I used to have when I was a little kid. So something like this is kind of natural. Or like I think I really enjoy it because uh, I'm a seeker, I guess, just like everybody else is. So, yes. Yeah, absolutely. It, it just on paper, it seems like this. You would never would have met this world in, in the case that you've been in IT. Usually mm-hmm. IT is very factual, you know, facts. Give me right. the numbers. <laughs> right. So did, were you able to – well, let's talk a little bit about what you did. You were a, an executive marketing senior management working yeah, in IT sure. companies. Yeah. So I was working in uh, basically a lot of Silicon Valley, you know, those big companies, uh, Japanese subsidiaries. So I was stationed in Japan, but I traveled back and forth, you know, around the world. And I was like a marketing guy. So I wasn't too techy. That kind of helped. So I really enjoyed it because uh, it's something very really similar because like software, I was selling software. You know, selling software and selling mar- marketing software is you have to sell and, 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 you know, market the things that you people can't really see it. You know what I mean? The software, you can't really see it, but you kind of have to explain to them how great it is. So it wasn't like a selling a PC hardware. A little bit, you know, selling so, software is much different. It's a different tactics that you have to take and approach. So I really, really enjoy, you know, presenting those kind of uh, like it's more like I presenting the idea and what you can, you know, how big, great the, the things gonna become by using this software. So it was like presenting, you know, the the great thing about this thing rather than what it actually is. So I really enjoy that. It's a, it's a very conceptual, you know, marketing. So I learned a lot from an IT company, actually. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and when you yeah. market software, as you mentioned, you can't see it. And right. in, in some cases, it's called vaporware because you're selling yeah. something people can't see. And right. I don't think I'm giving anything away with the real exorcist when I say this, but you actually can see through the veil and mm-hmm. I think that is something that is not usually seen here in the States. Um, as we were talking at the top of the hour, if we even have any word of exorcist or any association to it, it's just fear. Mm-hmm. And there isn't really yeah. a huge spiritual background to it. So you're actually marrying your IT, selling something you can't see <laughs> with this. <music. laughs> I, yeah. uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it's always great to uh, to try to explain to people what you cannot see, but it actually exists, or it might exist, it could exist, right? People don't have to believe it because you can't really see it, but hey, there's a lot of things that exist, but you cannot see, just like, I don't know, wind, we blow, you know, and like a breeze, you know, breeze blows right across our face, and we feel it, but we can never see the wind, right? Same thing as love too. Energy of love is flowing everywhere, but you cannot see it. Same thing is like a negative energy, which is more towards this movie, you know, topic between negative energy and positive energy. You cannot really see it, but they actually exist, right? So, yeah, those are the things I'm really interested in. The power of attraction and, you know, all the kind of stuff like that. Yeah, the timing is perfect that the movie is mm-hmm. coming out, as I mentioned, yeah. August 21st. Uh, I don't know if you know or not, today I'm going to do a timestamp. So today is July 29th, and I believe tomorrow The Secret is coming out. The actual Hollywood movie is coming out mm-hmm. tomorrow. So mm-hmm. there, 
it seems like, you know, this year we've gone through a lot, but there's a, a, a chamber, if you will, of the spiritual movement to get that yeah. awareness out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, when we made this movie, we, we never thought this was going to, you know, this 2020 was going to be like this. Nobody even imagined. But, you know, I just sometimes I, I wish, like, when I wake up in the morning, I wish I could just say, oh, my God, everything was just a bad dream. And, like, oh, thank God, <laughs> everything is back to normal. You know what I mean? But you can never wake up from the dream because it's not a dream. But then again, what, with everything, life is like a dream <laughs> to begin with. But... That's too philosophical, but uh, so, you know, uh, we just have to accept, you know, wh- where we are today, and it's, it's, it's not fortunate, but for this movie, I'm really uh, happy that we have something, this kind of movie to, to show to the world, because it can become, a, you know, the hope, and th- there's, a, there's a lot of messages that we can tie into to what's really happening to us, you know, around the world today. There's a lot of things and lessons that we need to learn from all the experiences we've been going through like six months, eight months, yeah, two months, right, so far. Yeah. So could you give a framework of The Real Exorcist? Uh, it's about a waitress, but could you set mm-hmm. that up for us? Sure. So there's a girl. Her name is Sayuri. She's like, a, I, I'm in 20s, right, a young girl. She looks very normal. She's working at the cafe as a cafe waitress, but she has a secret. And her secret is that she has the supernatural power. Uh, she can speak and talk to the ghosts and spirits, and she can read people's mind, read, read the past. And she also has this very powerful su- supernatural ritual power to expel all these evil spirits. So what happens is that uh, she has a little uh, sign up, says free consultation at the cafe. So when, you know, they walk by the cafe, you know, they say, hmm, I have this problem. Let me just go in. And this beautiful, young, innocent girl, Sairi, say, hi, welcome, everybody. And they start talking about things, and she finds out, you know, some issues the person is having. Then she'll start to solve these issues, like spiritual, you know, phenomenal issues. It, it is like a short story combined together. So it's kind of fun to watch through, and also every story has a very, very deep meaning and, and something that you can learn from. So just to give an example, there's a topic on suicide, miscarriage, you know, poltergeist uh, phenomenon, and also a big battle with the devil. I, you know, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but these are the topics that the she will be solving. So you get to learn together, you know, through the movie. It's so, that's mm-hmm. why it's so much fun to watch it. Absolutely, and mm-hmm. you, she is at a coffee shop. What's the name of the coffee shop, and why did they name the coffee shop that name? Now, coffee shop's name is uh, uh, Extra, Extra, uh, because Cafe Extra, uh, because it's a uh, it's like a, a fine fine coffee coffee sh- brewing shop. <laughs> so. Uh, that's why it's extra brand. They have a special uh, coffee blend called extra brand, and it, it kind of ties up to the, the setting of the movie where the coffee shop is a place for people to gather, and so it's easy to walk in and out. And also, that's how, that's where everything starts and everything ends. So it's like mm-hmm. a it's a, it's a fo- focal point of the movie. It's a cafe. We set it up that way, so it's, it's kind of nice. And it's sure. extra is the, the name of the brand, the coffee brand. It tastes like heaven. <laughs> yeah. Right, it tastes like heaven. And what I thought was interesting, maybe I missed that mm-hmm. part, I thought extra was short for exorcist or exorcism. Right, it, it right. Seems, it, it seems like they're the, the owners uh, are open to it. And, and help me out with this, because I know in, in Japanese culture, you're probably, I mean, you can help me out with the generalization, but they're more open to spiritual matters. And, you know, their daughter uh, and, the, the, and the family kind of could see through veils too. And they were just like, <laughs> yes. you know, and they were trying to like tell her it's rude to say it out loud, but she's a little kid and doesn't know. But yeah. I guess it was showing that uh, if she can see Sayora, that mm-hmm. ultimately it's okay and I know in the States with other people that we've interviewed, um, 
they had access to seeing through the veil when they became older. But when they mm-hmm. were, I mean, when they saw when they were children, their parents mm-hmm. usually uh, frowned on it and said, you know, it's right. make believe and hopefully it'll go away. So sure. it, yeah. it seems like there's a continuous or continual relationship uh, with the mm-hmm. seen and unseen in Japan. In yep. Japan, is that true? Mm, that I don't know. That's a good question because uh, um, you know Japanese. Mm, I, you know, actually, to be honest, I have a feeling that maybe the people in the U.S. or other countries might have even more uh, spirituality than today's Japanese people. That I don't know. Maybe uh, that's my my view. So Japanese have a uh, you know the backbone of a Shintoism. It's like a that's a Sayuri, Sayuri is kind of involved as well. She has the Shintoism, you know, clothes uh, when she battles the evil spirit. But uh, so we do have this big back, backbone of, uh, you know, traditional Japanese uh, Shintoism religion. But not many people believe that, you know, too much in, in that kind of uh, the field. So um, that's a good question to ask. But again, that's why we are throwing this movie out to the world as well, to hopefully they'll you know wake wake up and realize there is more than what you can see. So, and you know the question, I'm not sure if Japan is more spiritual than other countries. That's a big question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no worries. I, I was just mm. thinking about uh, some friends of mine that are Indian, and mm. in conversations they were saying that. You know, the opposite, whatever the opposite is always attractive. And so, like, from the 60s, we always, uh, you know, when you had the 60s culture, they were interested mm-hmm. in a lot of Eastern philosophies. And yep. then it seems like you're saying in Japan now, they're following the U.S. because the U.S. seems more right. open to spirituality. Mm, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, so Eastern, <laughs> Eastern philosophy is more, I guess, Buddhism-based and Western is Christian-based. So those two are different ways of you know, approaching God and, and, and Buddha. So um, this movie kind of mixed everything up. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, uh, there's a lot of love in it, which is very Christian, and there's a lot of uh, like dedication and you know uh, cultivating your, your soul. That is more like Buddhism, and also there's a little of a Shintoism spice over it as well. So it goes across mm-hmm. the religion, yeah. Sure, and a lot of the messages, it seems like, I mean, there, you are the executive uh, vice president of Happy Science Productions, and so could you tell us a little bit about Happy Science, and sure. are they employing a lot of the teachings into the movie? Mm, I see, it's a good question. So the the original story writer is Riho Okawa, like, like I explained to you before, and he is the founder of a group called Happy Science, so I don't know if you have any listeners have heard of Happy Science. Not many of them, probably not. Uh, but in Japan, it's uh, one of the largest or the most influential, influential spiritual movement today, and it's huge uh, activities there in Japan. So uh, Riho Oka has established Happy Science in 1986. So it's been more than 30 years since its, its establishment, and. Um, he's been doing a lot of lectures, you know, around Japan. He actually went overseas. He's been to New York as well. But uh, he's done over, like, 3,100 lectures in the past um, uh, 30 years or so. And he published about 2,700 books or something like that. So uh, it's always become bestseller in Japan, Japan's bookstore. So he's a pretty famous person as, as, like, a spiritual master. And so uh, Happy Science is still uh, active today. And it's pretty small in the United, United U.S. today. We have about maybe 10, 10 centers across the, the state, but uh, they're spreading across over 100 countries. We are bigger than in like uh, Asian countries, India and Brazil, more than the, the Western uh, countries. So that's basically background of Happy Science. And... Uh, my company, HS Productions, for HS Productions, it's like a, um, it's a branch out of Happy Science. So all the movies that Happy Science create, you know, we never really had the opportunity to bring this out to the world until recently. So 
So we established this company last year, and this is actually the, the, like the second or third movie we've been pushing out to the world. And um, the content itself, yes, it has a lot of uh, background of happy science uh, philosophy, if you want to call it that way, or teaching, uh, if you want to call it that way. And so it's about giving love and how important it is for the gratitude and, you know, uh, trying to explain some of the secret of the behind the scenes that's happening, the unseen truth about our life. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Do you and need to explain, should I ask some more about happy science or is this enough for now? On yeah, I, 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 yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I probably want to hear a, a little bit more because I think the criticism is when something's new, and mm-hmm. it could just be human nature as what happened to uh, uh, Ciari's friend in the movie and his girlfriend, right? So if it's right. new, you're going to rebel it. And so I know the, the press locally or here in the States, uh, they had a, a piece about happy science in March when, when the virus first happened. And so mm-hmm. they were like, well, who, who are these folks? And, you know, they, they were kind of digging in, but from an outsider. So that's why – you know, I'm speaking with someone on the inside that can probably right. give a more objective output. Mm, I see. Well, happy science is, is always in transparency. The great thing about happy science is that yeah, I've, been, I've been with happy science for a while, and uh, mm, I don't know, it, everything is so transparent. You know, we don't, happy science doesn't hide anything. We're always open to any questions, and uh, there's no secret in, 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 in us. Any activities we do is always open. All the, the lectures that Ryuho Oka talks about becomes a book, and it's actually in the bookstore. So whoever wants to buy and pick up and read, it's their choice to do it. And I don't know. Um, of course, it's always going to be a criticism. You know, in anything, there's always uh, the flip coin, you know, the uh, coin. Uh, um, uh, the, it's like a coin, in 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 yen thing. It's always uh, uh, two sides to, you know, everything. So people might say negative things and also people will say positive things. So we just try to be open and honest and take in what people say and listen to them. But, you know, we just we just want to be bring out the positive message to the world. So um, this movie, if you watch the movie, I think a lot of people would, would enjoy it very much and and probably don't even notice anything that is like unusual I and mean, it's an interesting story but something that is you know like feel negative about it i don't know mm-hmm. did you did you feel anything like that no no not at all yeah. and it, mm. not at all so that's why i was i was just wondering because uh, sure. i know one one thing was uh on the happy science site they they're they're into different vibrations, so they have like different media that you can listen to that calms your system and what have you. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's not mainstream even here in the states. Right. <laughs> so, so it was just like it depends on the audience who's who that right. you're talking to. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so for for I mean, you've been in it since 2010, so that's 10 years. What what was life yeah, before? Yeah. What was life uh, before uh, then, and what made you want to join? No, oh, so I was uh, I was in IT field, you know, for a long time, and like I was explaining to you before, and I was doing a lot of uh, you know directing, positioning in IT, and and you know I had a very good life, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, I don't know, like like I said, I was always a speaker, even though I was working for IT company, you know, I was reading uh, Oka Riho Riho Oka's books, you know, as you know, it was so much fun for me to read it. So, because I met uh, his book, first time I met his book was in 1980, I think it was 88. It's been a while uh, when I just graduated from high school and I was living in New York. And my, one of my friends gave me his book. It's called The Lord of the Sun. And I don't know, I, you know, without any any filtering, I just read it. And it, it was in Japanese, but... When I read it, I just felt like like a lot of things that was inside. I just I just felt like I knew about it. You know those those feelings you get like wait a minute. I think I've learned this somewhere. You know before I, I know this. I know that. I know that. I mean 
So it was like a very, very interesting experience for me, even though I was just graduated from high school. And so, yeah, I feel like, wow, this book is very interesting. So after that, I started reading his book. So I've been always like the great fan of Ri Ho-Fa's book, you know, for, for many years. And I just had this opportunity of, uh, you know, uh, becoming a staff for Happy Science to help Happy Science with the website and the marketing on IT field and things like that, which was my, my specialty I've been doing for, you know, over 10 years. So I thought, you know, maybe, you know, I can, it's time for me to like, contribute to something else that is more than just for myself. So I thought that would be a good chance, you know, a good turning point for my life. So that's how I started it, and it's been about 10 years since then. So now I'm doing wow. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to ask very, you. Very interesting life yeah, life well, cra- crazy life, like you said, it's like a dream sometimes when you look back thing. at. It's a crazy yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> you look. You're looking back at high school, like, and if somebody told you in high school you'd be instrumental <laughs> in happy science, you probably would have looked at them like, what are you talking about? Right. right. Yeah. Right. But it just, it just, that one book just hit me. And like, wow. And another interesting thing is, like, when I was, I was kind of very spiritual. Like, I was very uh, sensitive, sensitive to, like, the vibration energy when I was young. In, now I know if I look back to when I was, you know, when you're young, you don't, you don't notice it. But when you back, mm-hmm. look back to it, sometimes you realize it. And I was living in Lebanon. And Lebanon, their root was like, like heaven right before the war started. It was like a heavenly place. And it was so beautiful. And I used to go to church on Sunday. It was right by the Mediterranean Sea, by the rock. And from the rock, you can see the ocean, you know, blue ocean, the blue sky. And every Sunday, you know, my, my parents took me there. And when I was like three or five years old, I, I felt this very warm light, like, like, like talking to me. I, I remember that, you know. I, I never forget that moment. So when even I was in like in middle school, I always had that. That was the only moment I really still remember it in, from Lebanon experience. And when I read the book, right after, you know, in high school, right after I graduated from high school, I felt the same energy. I don't know, it's, it might sound so crazy, but like that's when that's that's when I that's why I think I I thought like I know this book because I I felt the same light when I was standing by the church in Lebanon, and it just like connected me, you know, entire life just connected me. From that moment when I was three to five years old to right after high school graduation, and it just linked. So that book was something so meaningful to me. So since then, mm-hmm. I've been studying his books. So. I, I think it's thanks for sharing that story about your mm-hmm. childhood in, in, Be- in Beirut. Uh, mm-hmm. This is the second time in a couple of weeks that I've heard this. Uh, so I was I was uh, watching a, a comedy special with Russell Peters. And mm-hmm. Russell Peter is, you know, Indian comedian, and he travels the world like you do. And so when he mm-hmm. was talking about Beirut, the audience was like, yeah, that's like Vegas. But to the West, we're, you know, we're just turned off by it. And how do you well, – the reason why I bring it up is because I, I want to – I think I know the answer. But why is it so important to travel globally? Oh, I mean, it's one – yeah, one, one answer. You, your eyes, your perspective was open more things you see with your eyes and, and what you feel and what you hear and what you touch and what you eat. I love to eat. <laughs> so what you eat, all the energy that you experience, you know, from different culture, that would just that would just cultivate your soul more. So reading the book, you know, watching the movie, those are great. Ex- like watching the movie too, you know, it will give you, or, or reading the books, uh, uh, that will kind of give you, um, not the reality, it's a fictional reality, but you still feel that same energy, right? I think that's why I'm so into movies and, and music and things like that. But so by, by experiencing different things with different eyes, of course it's going gonna, it's gonna, um, to gain something for, for your soul. So um, as much as you can see with your eyes and travel with your feet, I know it's going to be very difficult to even get on plane nowadays. But 
it's different than just watching it on TV. They actually being mm-hmm. there. I'm sure everybody understands what that means, but uh, yeah, Absolutely. especially um, you know, being in touch with culture. So wherever I travel, uh, even though if I'm in business, I will always just go to to like local stores, local supermarket. What kind of vegetables there is? What kind of fish they eating? You know, because every country has so much different things and how they think, and it's so much fun to just observe mm. it, just being there. So, absolutely. Thanks for mm. sharing that. So mm-hmm. I, I do want to go back with uh, go back to the movie of the Real Exorcist, mm-hmm. and so um, this year in 2020, uh, this is the first time for a lot of people to actually be at home. You know, you're not allowed to go out for the most part, yeah. and so there's a lot of uh, psychological issues that will yeah. probably last for the next couple of years or generations. Right. Right. And as a negative result, there is an uptick or has been an increase of suicides. Yeah. And in in the Real Exorcist, they do cover that subject matter. Mm-hmm. And yep. Sayori, she you know she has the capability and such, and she always saw lower energies around people. Yep. Do you think that in 2020 there is greater negative energy around because they're attracted to that fear and worry that people are carrying with them? Yeah, I have to say I have to say yes. Yeah. I mean, coronavirus, the, the worst thing this thing brought to us, I think, is fear, right? Because um, everything is around fear, I think. Um, and so, um, like, for example, uh, U.S., there's a lot of, still there's a lot of big, big, big numbers who are, you know, getting infected with corona. Uh, but in Japan, there's only like 100 per, per day. 200 per day is very, still very small, not so big, but the fear is so much bigger where, like, you know what I mean? Like, I mm-hmm. don't know. I mean, of course, it's always, it's important you put the masks on, keep the social distance, you know, try not to get as much as, less as much as possible and be careful as much, but I think the fear is getting to us more than the actual virus. Mm-hmm. So I think definitely, yes. And especially with that, what's the worst thing is happening now is like, oh, the economy is, is, has to stop. And, you know, the economy is lifeline. And it's a little bit off topic from this movie, but the economy is our lifeline. So if you cannot work and if you cannot get paid, you know what I mean? If, if the recession is going to get so bad where, you know, some, some countries might not even, you know, start to, to operate anymore. That's how bad things can get, you know, in mm-hmm. next year or two. We don't know what's going to happen. But I think that the, the effect of what coronavirus is bringing to us is going to get even bigger uh, as a result. So I'm very fearful about what's going to happen in the future, you know, next, next year to coming future as well. I think everybody else is, everybody's as well, but we just don't know how to, you know, deal with it, and how, how to cope with it, because there's no solution at this point. But I mm-hmm. think fear is the biggest uh, enemy that we have right now. Right. And mm-hmm. in, in, the, in the movie, when she was, she didn't even, uh, using the, the high school girls uh, and the girl that had committed suicide, mm-hmm. yep. she, she didn't know, I mean, you, you dealt with that subject matter that those earthbound spirits didn't even know they had passed on. Right. And so could you talk a little bit about what is an earthbound spirit and why do they choose to stick around? Sure. Maybe we can talk about the real, a little bit the, the story storyline about just the suicide part so people kind of get better understanding. So what happens is in this movie, just the one, one a small episode about suicide. There was a high school girl. She was bullied at school, so she committed suicide. It was like years ago, but now uh, she's she's an earthbound spirit. In other words, um, either you believe it or not, it's okay. If you believe in spirits, that's great. If you don't, that's fine. Just take it as a, as an interesting story. But for us, it's a real thing. So I'm gonna talk it as a real thing. But so when you, you when you die. Um, you don't disappear. You don't go anywhere. 
but you're gonna you you're just gonna leave your body. Your soul is gonna leave your body in your mind in who you are to exist. And that's the reality of this this world. So in other words, if you commit suicide because um, of a bully or you cannot stay, you know, in this stand uh, anymore, so you decide to commit suicide. But after you commit suicide, you 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 wish or you you think you just could disappear and all the pain and is gonna go away. But actually, it doesn't go away. It's gonna stay with you. And if you don't know the truth about that, you don't even know that you are already dead. So that's what's happening in the in the story. And there's another girl who is actually living. Uh, girl today, she she's kind of hunted uh, to to this uh, committed suicide committed high school girl because she had the same feeling. You know, she wasn't doing well in the school exam, and she was like, "Oh my God, I'm not doing so well. Maybe I don't know how to do it. I do. I want to die." And then suicide girl kind of you know it was a power of attraction and came close to this girl. So that's how the story unfolds. But then what happens is Sayuri finds out all these things happening and she will tell the girl who committed suicide that, you know, the life doesn't end here and, you know, you have eternal life. So then she'll understand it and she she sent back to heaven. So, you mm-hmm. know, that's like a story behind the scenes. So, um, yeah, so, you know, um, committing suicide... I know the person who is thinking about committing suicide, if you are now, I mean, that's like the the person must be in such a hardship and painful moment because if you're not, you wouldn't think about, you know, ending your life. So we, we understand how difficult it is, but at the same time, uh, you have to think about not just about for yourself, but what's going to happen to you after you come after you end your life. It's going to continue on. So maybe there's something you know you can stop thinking, thinking about that, and think about what you can do to you know solve this issue, or you know maybe there's somebody you can talk to your mother, your father, your, your friend, um, whoever. Maybe you need to talk to somebody, or think about what's going to happen to the ones who are left behind. Okay, there's a maybe, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40 people around you who love you who's going to have to go through the suffering, especially your family, for the rest of their lives if they don't know the real truth. So, you know, uh, it's going to help even for the families who have uh, uh, that kind of experience uh, by knowing the real truth. Hopefully, uh, it will heal the wounds that they have. That's why we have this small section of suicide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you can add and, and, the comments but, to that, that'd be great. Sure, yeah, thanks for sharing. And, and it mm-hmm. seemed like um, in that instance and some others that they could, those individuals couldn't distinguish if it were their thoughts or not. And when you were talking about attraction, sometimes Earth earthbound spirits are like, oh, yeah, you feel just like me. Come join me. <laughs> Misery, right, loves exactly. com- <laughs> Misery loves company, as they say. Exactly. So how can you determine, or is there any way or any exercises that you can determine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. your seniority? Mm-hmm. Like, I, these are right. my thoughts, and I want to repel negative energy. Right, right. So you have to you have to know what is negative energy and what is positive energy, right? So negative energy is something negative. So it could be, I don't know, hatred, could be anger, fear definitely is negative, right? The worries, uh, you know, the things that you worry or, or like self-denial, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm never going to be good, that kind of energy, that's negative. Jealousy to somebody, this is one of the big topics in this movie, you know, that is another negative energy. So if you really think about it, you know, what is positive and what's negative, it's pretty clear. You know, I, mean, I think it's pretty clear. Maybe there's some something in the middle, it's neutral, but it's either it's positive or it's negative. So um, I don't know. Um, that's why I, I know, you're going to, it's always nice to have uh, some kind of guideline 
Like my guideline is uh, happy science we hold because books and teaching, so that becomes my guideline. And I'm sure there's a lot of different uh, other other great you know pe- people you know who can guide you to determine what is good and what is wrong, what is positive and what is negative. But at the end of the day, what this movie is trying to tell as uh, the biggest message is that. Uh, Sari actually says this is what, what, this, what she says. She says um, how to you know fight negative energy. You know, if somebody asks her question, and her answer is that uh, first you have to believe in God. First you have to believe in God. It could be Buddha. It could be uh, the, the greatest universe. But we use the word God, you know, in this movie. Uh, then always be grateful for the life you've been given. So grateful for the life you've been given, because evil spirits never feel gratitude. Okay? So all they have is grievance. So not to give in to this negativity, you need faith in gratitude. That's the kind of key word that she she says. So I think the the faith, you know, having faith and also the the power of gratitude is is very very important. It's like a basic basic energy of love that you know. Not to take, but to give. The love that gives. It's a Christian basic uh, teaching of giving love. So I think those two are the, the main uh, points that you can learn from this movie is to how to fight the negative energy by power of faith and, and power of gratitude or of how love. Love can, love can never be defeated. Or, I don't know, evils can never defeat love or that never be defeated. I don't know what the best way to put it, but uh, it's the most strongest power in the world, I think. Uh, Absolutely. That's the biggest message we want to tell to this movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the other part to kind of com- um, combine that is the the setting was in the coffee shop, and mm-hmm. what what I was actually thinking of was uh, earlier in the podcast you mentioned like everyone else on the planet you know in 2019 we never would have thought we'd be in this position today yeah and as a result a lot of people are drinking more and Mm. so when you drink more you know i was like they're in a coffee shop it'd be really interesting to see the the negative energy uh beings around bars and nightclubs and Mm. so when it was great that you mentioned that to be grateful for the life that you're living what Mm. would you say to that person that they may not even have a drinking problem but because of 2020 they may be drinking Mm. more than normal how how can they get around that well drinking i think is 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 not prohibited thing i mean it's good thing or you know it will relax your your body and you'll kind of you know it has a healing effect as well you know to a point but uh I don't know. Um, I think like the middle way. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds cheesy, but you know, to talk to a person who's drinking, oh, guys, you have to learn the middle way. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like lecturing to the people in the bar. It's a kind of strange thing. Who are you, a Christian <laughs> or like Buddhism? <laughs> right. but, but anyway, so like, I don't know. Uh, to the point, I think it's always nice to you know, enjoy those moments, you know, having fun with friends and together, enjoy the moment, relax, have a little drink here and there. But, you know, don't go to the extreme. Anything that you do in your life, you know, try to not go to extreme but like that's where the self control and like you know, always helping yourself, making efforts kind of self self help idea comes in. But uh, I don't know, that's kinda of difficult because Every person is different, so um, every person will need a different, different comments and different ways of, uh, of the words that would that would you know attract them. But in general, um, drinking is okay. But if you think you're drinking it too much, I don't know. Maybe you need to save it a <laughs> little, I guess, and put that time into something that is a little more constructive. That is for not for just for yourself, but others as well mm-hmm. I guess mm. yeah sure and, and we were not saying don't drink so <laughs> I was just <laughs> I, I I know another conversation that uh, uh-huh. there are lower lower spirits right and then usually sure. if someone's drunk they never remember what happened 
the night before. And it it made me also think of walk-ins. Are you familiar with the term walk-in? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I'm sure they're tempted, you know. When you drink, your, uh, yeah, your, your rational uh, mind will go away, you know. So uh, it's much, much easier for the evil spirits to, to walk in and jump on, jump on you and possess you, whatever the words you want to use. So, of, of course, you're not going to remember anything because it's not really you that's doing whatever you're doing. And when you wake up in the morning, you have no idea what you did. That's because somebody else was doing it, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of, mm-hmm. I don't know, I, will, I wouldn't want to say it's a common thing, but it's a common story, right? Even if it's true or maybe if it's a fantasy, something like that is pretty common nowadays, I think, to talk about. So it is true, mm-hmm. I think. Mm, definitely. Yeah. So you have to. That's what I'm saying. Middle way is important. Don't don't let your rational mind be taken away by something else. Always have at least have that you know common sense in you when you're drinking. If you think you're gonna lose it, I don't know. You need the power of your mind to say, okay, this is enough for me. I need to stop it. Right. If you can't, then you're just gonna keep going on and on and on. But then again. You know, every person is different. So some people are weak, some people are strong, strong, and actually, not many people are strong. You know, so we, we oh. I understand that very much. So especially in nowadays in the situation, staying home and nothing to do, watch TV, and it comes, it's going down, and you don't know what's going to happen to your job in the next few months. All the worries and there's a beer and, and alcohol. Of course, you want to, you know, start drinking. So that's very understandable. But I think this is where you really need to say to yourself, you know, this is it. I, I'm not, I, I can't let something, something else take over myself. So just keep that yeah. common sense, you know, sharp sense. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's very important. Yeah. Sure. Thanks for sharing mm-hmm. that. And, mm-hmm. and I was also thinking about, like, for movies, uh, especially mm-hmm. here in the States, there's, you know, there's a conflict and then you overcome it and then everybody rides off and goes down the rainbow at the end. And yeah. so if I put it in terms of 2020, it seemed as an out, it seemed like every other country had a good handle on, I mean, like you said, no one has the ultimate answer, but there's been less occurrences more so than in the States. And then in uh, recent, I think it was yesterday or the day before, there's been reports of numbers spiking up again across the world. Yep. And so, how do you keep the how do you keep the self control mm. and gratitude mm. right. when we're used to oh it's going to be over in a half an hour or right. an hour, right. and right. we're a year into it? How do you, how do you keep the positive yeah. mind state? Mm-hmm. That's difficult because uh, I don't know. I think. It's not going to end next week, I mean, tomorrow, you know what I mean? It's not going to end, and, and, and it's probably going to continue on for a while, and I don't know how long it's going to continue on, but I don't know, year two, we, we never know, right? But, I mean, these things, viruses, uh, like pests, and we, we, we had these kind of things for past hundreds and hundreds of years, and, and because we are so highly... Uh, uh, scientifically, you know, uh, has a high uh, technology and high, you know, uh, medicine medicine technology. You know, we able to create vaccine sooner than 300 years ago, of course. So this is something not uncommon. It, we have always experienced this in the past as human human race. So we are, it's 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 like a cycle of life where it's it's coming back to us again. But I think, from why I'm looking at it, um, you can either look at really negatively and positively. If you look at very negatively, you can say, "Oh, the evil spirits are coming out from the hell, and devils are taking over the world. That's why this is happening." Maybe it's true, maybe not. But other hand, you know, how I would like to look at it is like maybe God, okay, or something good is is doing this intentionally because there's something that we're missing as human beings. You know, that's how I'm trying to look at it. So what are we missing? You know, I think we are being a little too arrogant. 
that we think we are like the creator of the universe. But yet, God's probably saying, no, 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 no. There's somebody else <laughs> higher than you guys. You know, what happened to the gratitude? Have you been thanking your friends, you know, your neighbors? Why are you guys fighting so much, you know, not just uh, you know, around the, the world, but within the U.S.? There's always fighting going on. And now even it's getting worse and worse. And God's probably saying, this is what I'm talking about. You know, what happened to, how can, why can't you just say thank you to the people next to you? Because if everybody starts to say thank you to next people next to you, you know, things like this will not ever happen. So I think uh, God's telling us, you know, there's something we need to learn is to to go back to, you know, having faith. Again, go back to faith uh, or, or being more, uh, stop being too arrogant. You need the humbleness of, of, you know, taking care of other people and, giving love and giving gratitude to, to the people, not just people, but to also to the higher, you know, existence, God and, and Buddha. So, you know, that's how, I think there's a lesson that we need to learn from these experiences that we are all going through. And that might take a little longer, but hopefully we all realize it. Sure. And, yeah. and uh, that, that is one other thing that I feel about the real exorcist so someone says, oh, it doesn't apply to me. There are multiple stories in there that you can draw from. So it's not, like mm-hmm. you said, it, it feels like a compilation of stories. And it is coming to the state. So is it going, going to be a national release or in select cities? It's going to be uh, just a selected cities. Um, for now, uh, as, a, as a theater, um, it's difficult. We are still trying to figure out which theater is going to be open and which date. And it seems like it's been delayed and delayed and delayed. So currently we are targeting August 21st for like New York, Los Angeles, Orange, San Francisco, Florida, uh, Atlanta, Hawaii, Chicago, Vancouver, Toronto, and some uh, places like that. But we're also coming out with VOD and DVD on September 1st which is a very early release of the, we call it like a day and date release, but it's almost like a same day release, because mm-hmm. we thought it's very important to push this message out as much as possible, not just in this limited release, because only only handful of people will be able to watch this movie, but with power of VOD and DVD, there'll be more people who can watch this movie. So we're hoping to combine the theater release and the DVD and VOD together within this year and I saw it in subtitles is it going to be in subtitles or is it going going to be dubbed oh uh, we have both oh yeah okay. so most of the movie theater is going to do a dubbed version I think but okay. uh, we have subtitles so if you go VOD DVD of course DVD has been switched you can either watch a subtitle or dubbed version and that version actually came out really, really well. We were very happy with the, the outcome. So people who are just not too familiar or not too fond of reading the subtitle and listening to Japanese, uh, it kind of get confusing. Uh, you can just go with the, the dub version. But if you want to feel like the original energy and original cultural uh, feel, uh, you can go with subtitle as well. Both are pretty good, I think. Oh, I, I definitely agree. Definitely mm-hmm. agree. So, uh, Yoshi, again, arigato. Uh, arigato thanks for making the, Yes. And uh, the name of the movie is The Real Exorcist. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there any websites, uh, social sure. media, where people can get in yep. touch with you? Website is uh, www.realexorcistmovie.com. Realexorcistmovie.com. If you go to the website, there's a link to the Instagram and Facebook, and we post almost every day now now Instagram. So if you're interested, please follow up for us in Instagram and Facebook as well. We can give you the well, latest information on that. Awesome. Well, mm-hmm. you have just been in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza. Yoshi, it was a pleasure. Please stay in touch with your future movies as well. Sure. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it very much. All right.
now? Have we finished?